friends, the time for mediocrity and broadcasting is over. My name is Tony Jones, and you are tuned into the Tony Jones Show, your destination for talk and rock. Online at TonyJones.org, Facebook.com slash Tony Jones Show, on the almighty Twitter at Tony Jones in RI. Be sure to go to RIFreeRadio.org. With me, as always, is my occasional co host, Mr. George Garner. George, good evening. Good evening. DJ Psycho Eddie is here, of course, doing intense show prep, getting ready for My Night Out Radio. He's, he's a man on a mission. He's got like 20 screens up, uh, calling in sources from all over the globe, doing research, as I uh, have done a ton of research here, as you could see from my, um, what are these called? Index cards. That's, that's the... That's the profession. Sticky notes. I, I used to use sticky notes. I've moved up to index cards here. Didn't we used to call that scrap paper? <laughs> uh. I, you know, I figured I have multiple thousands of dollars in student loan debt. I should at least start using <laughs> index cards. A few things happened this week. They made me feel young again. So I want to talk about that in just a little bit. And we have some, uh, we have some parties coming up. Some big parties coming up. And we're going to talk about that in just a little bit and i have to mention at the top of the hour that my if you're here locally there's a movie in town they're in need of extras the movie's called polka king it is starring jack black it's filming all throughout rhode island they need extras but they need extras that are fresh faces so they need people that haven't been in the movie yet so if you're interested in some extra work it's polka ldi at gmail.com polka p-o-l-k-a like the horrible polish music LDI as an LDI casting at gmail.com. Now, does that give us a clue as what the movie is about? You know, I haven't read the full synopsis, but it's a, it's a pretty big budget film that's happening uh, right now in Rhode Island. And they've, uh, you know, at one point, I think we've talked about this before, at one point they were trying to turn Rhode Island kind of into Hollywood East. Right. And that's kind of waned off a little bit, especially when they go through the SAG folks first. Not SAG as in my male breasts. <laughs> SAG is in the Screen Actors Guild. Right. Uh, you know, they have a certain amount of SAG people they need, and they don't have the, uh, the infrastructure for that yet here in Rhode Island. In other, wor- or now, I'm c- in other words, what do you mean by that? Uh, so, elucidate just a bit. So because they, you know, because this is a big budget movie, right. it's a union movie, right. so they have to offer it to the Screen, the screen Actors Guild first. Okay. But there's not many Screen Actors Guild members here in Rhode Island, so that's when they start going into the, uh, you know, into the dregs, if you will, and just okay, but, they'll take anybody. But why did the uh, wave of uh, Rhode Island filmatic creativity wane in having to do with that? You know, Is there I'm a not, connection? I think part of it had to do with there, there was a tax uh, bonus for you to film here. That is now gone. Okay. Uh, and there was also a, a state level kind of like a cabinet position. That's now gone, but... I mean, location-wise, where else can you be in a city and then down by the ocean 15 minutes later? Yeah, basically. Yeah, so it has its appeal. It's just that those artificial incentives are gone. I, I worked on a, a movie, a big-name movie, and uh, called Underdog, which was a remake of the old Underdog cartoon. And it was filming at Club Hell in Providence. Next door to Club Hell was a, a small coffee shop. And they made so much money during that six months that they actually closed down the business and moved somewhere else. Because <laughs> <laughs> they were the only place open while this filming was happening. Now, that Underdog, though, wasn't a big success. Is that something to do with it, too, that most of the films that have been shot in Rhode Island haven't been successful? Yeah, you know, there's been a handful. I think Rhode Island is still more known for independent features just because there's such a huge independent fi- scene. And also, you can s- film here and screen in New York and screen in Boston uh, fairly easily and move it into the, some of the bigger well, markets. Actually, if you look at it, you had the Farrelly brothers that came from Rhode Island, and they did stuff like uh, something about Mary. Yeah, but that was uh, twenty Dumb years. And Dumber. That was yeah. twenty years ago. Well, it was twenty Outside years ago Providence. when the incentives were there for everyone to do it in Rhode Island. But I mean, they, they still have all the locations. They still have some of the people that are, are still around that can kind of sort of act. <laughs> but then again, this is Rhode Island, so everyone. You know, they've got something coming in, you know, or they want something to, to, to line their hands to let it happen. Yeah. No, it's just that the last couple of movies I can remember that were actually released theatrically and were actually had some shots filmed in Rhode Island was Amistad and um, that other uh, Leonardo DiCaprio movie, uh, Meet Joe Black. 27 Dresses did well, also featuring Tony Jones as a bartender. Uh, and about to be released is the story of... 
uh, I can't think of his name now, the boxer. I used to run into him drunk at Bickford's all the time. Oh, oh that one, Pazienza. <laughs> yes, yes. His <laughs> life story is going to be out there pretty soon. And that, they brought in Scorsese for that, all filmed in Rhode Island, uh-huh. uh, using the actual, they used some of the actual locations where the actual things happened, okay. which I thought was cool. So that should be a little bit of, of a boost to the, uh, to the film uh, industry here. Yeah, but as long it, as they don't let Pazienza actually open his mouth in real life. <laughs> Yeah, he does a better job than Donald Trump of oh, sinking his own career. You could blame it on the uh, blame it on the head injury. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to the tunes now. We're gonna hear from the now defunct October Accord. One of my favorite tunes from them here is "Cheap Shot of the Year."
last night, the name of that one, Locals Kama Kama, right here on the Tony Jones Show. Before that, we heard from the now defunct October Accord, Cheap Shot, the name of that track, Cheap Shot of the Year, the name of the EP. Tony Jones here, you were tuned into the Tony Jones Show. George Garner is here, DJ Psycho Eddie is here, and you know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, however... Did you watch any of the, uh, Eddie, you probably didn't, George, you probably did. Did you watch any of the Democratic convention this I past week? I did watch some of it, as much as my stomach could stand. I do believe that Bill Clinton may be a reptilian. <laughs> I'll tell Homeboy's you, looking rough, huh? He's looking rough, but he's hanging in there. More like a Terminator machine. <laughs> yeah, he just won't die. Every time they cut to him, I mean... I, I cringed a little. I mean, I, I remember the Bill Clinton of, of old, you know, the Bill Clinton that was up there when I was a kid doing kind of crazy stuff. Yep, the virile sexual predator. The, yeah. The, the, the hound, if you will, you know. <laughs> he, was, he was chasing down fatties. I mean, and now he just looks like old skin with a suit hanging on it. Yeah, he is determined to get back in the White House, though, <laughs> you know, and revisit old glories. You know, he just wants to go back and sniff around under that desk one more time. You know, we, we, I think we talked about it on your show, or maybe it was Chuckle's show, but the very fact that Hillary Clinton, should she be elected president, will be working where that transpired. Yes, yes, we I did mean, mention it, yeah. <laughs> that's insane when you really think about it. It is. I mean, Hil- can't you just picture her legs crawling? Yeah, while she sits at that desk. She might just redo the whole office to kind of uh, get away from all that. Yeah, definitely the relocate the desk. One year ago today, to this very day, one of my favorite professional wrestlers passed away. Roddy, Rowdy, Roddy Piper. Well, already? It's been it's a year already. already. A year. It's been a year. That's one of the times where I, uh, I think we talked about it before. I kicked myself in the butt. You know, we were doing... Rock and Shock one year, Piper was appearing, but we were busy with our booth. We were kind of busy doing our thing at the convention, and I kept telling myself, I'll get over there to meet Piper this weekend. You know, I'll get over there. Right. Never got over there. If it'll make you feel any better, though, that environment there isn't really the place where you want to re- meet personal favorites and legends. Well, in other words, it, it's, it's, such an, you know, it's such an artificial environment. You know what I'm saying? It's not like you ran into him in a bar and said, hey, Roddy, I'll buy you a beer. You know, it's just, it's so artificial. It's not the same thing. And I think it was you that brought it to my attention years back, the fact that the best part of these conventions don't happen at the conventions. Right. <laughs> it's right. It's running into people yeah. outside the conventions. Exactly. I did a, uh, you know, we did the toy and comic show, not this past year, the year before, and I stayed at the hotel there and uh, I got to break bread and have breakfast with uh, little Phoenix, the uh, Felix, the original cousin it. So there you go. Solo. For whoever walked into the hotel that morning, saw myself and a midget <laughs> breaking bread, <laughs> all yeah. pie-eyed because we were up late the night before and just hanging out and uh, you know having a good time. Yeah, no, I can't recommend that enough. If you go to a multi-day convention, I mean, it's not even worth it to go unless you make sure that you're there overnight and you basically scope out the after-hours right. places. Well, what I uh, I have a pretty good experience at uh, Rhode Island Comic Con uh-huh. because I always do the after parties afterwards because that's where you get to sit down with people like Michael Jai White. I had a chance to sit down with him and his wife. Uh, who he's the one who coined the the term that I use a lot: wifeager, uh-huh. uh-huh. half wife, half manager. Um, I've actually met Felix Felix Silla, uh, Buck Rogers, uh, Gil Gerard. Yeah. And the original Captain America, Red Brown, were one, two, three in a row. And first day at Comic Con, and this is going back a few years, that I'm just walking by in full clown getup. So Gil Gerard starts busting my chops. So I stop busting back. Right. And then Felix chimes in. And, and then for the rest of the weekend, as you're walking by, hey, you're fat. Hey, you're old. And <laughs> we, we had this camaraderie going right. for the weekend. And Reb Brown now, every time I see him, he, you know, he goes out of his way to say hi to me instead of me playing fanboy and, and having to go out and you know, <laughs> right. shake his hand. Right. Now, the other thing to think of or keep in mind as a veteran con- convention goer is when you do meet someone that you want to talk to on the convention floor, either you know, paying the $20 for the privilege <laughs> or they just happen to be walking along, don't mention what they're most known for. Right. 
just don't do that. If you want this person to think of you as anything but a crawling cockroach. Because if you're also doing the convention, hopefully they think of you as a peer. Now, that right. might not be the case if you're fanboying out. Well, there's, when it comes to conventions, I think I've explained this to uh, someone else. Now, you have the professionals, whether, you know, if it's at the Comic Con, you have the actors and the uh, artists. If it's uh, at one of the uh, writers' conferences, you have the writers and the fans. For the celebrities, there's, there's two separate, what you say, threads of conversation. There's the thread of conversation that the celebrities use among themselves, and there's the thread of conversation the celebrities use with the fans. Right. The, the, two, the two are patented. Okay. If you, the, your goal as someone that wants to actually get them to see you as a human being is to break out of that pattern. In other words, interest them in a way that, like you touched on, that they don't look at you as fanboy. Exactly. And the way to do that is like I say, don't mention whatever it is they're most known for. Don't mention, in other words, mention something you have a sincere interest in in their career that's obscure. Well, that's, in other words, gen- you know, not to be too, uh, not to uh, plant, what would you say, uh, not to be too intentional about it. In other words, you want it to be spontaneous. Yeah. But, but, for example, when I met Doug Bradley, you know, who played Pinhead and Hellraiser, um, I struck up a conversation with him about, a couple of the portraits he had taken out of character. And all of a sudden, he was a different person. So, yeah, something other than the obvious. That's something other than the obvious. And those before and after buffer times are when you get to find out, for better or for worse, it may kill you in your heart of hearts, who's there because they want to be there, they enjoy it, and who's there because they got to eat. <laughs> okay, I'll so- actually, I'll make that really easy for everybody listening. George Romero wants to be there. Right. Everyone else is there because they want to eat. And uh, Robert England. And Robert England. It's actually usually the folks with the longer lines are there because they enjoy being there. They're taking the time. And then right. you have the folks that want to uh, he- have a cheeseburger. Hence the longer lines. <laughs> yeah, that makes yeah. sense. No, I, I like uh, the people that have the longer lines. When you see them walking away from their booth, and they'll actually stop at another booth or, or, or just stop at one of the local vendors uh, I had an opportunity to meet Eddie McClintock from mm-hmm. Warehouse 13. And as he was walking by, I just hear, hey, Eddie, how you doing? And I have nothing in common with this man except for the first name. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time he was done, he took pictures with me, didn't charge me to take pictures. I gave him a T-shirt. And, you know, we're not best of friends again, but we get to talk. Also, uh, I, in fact, I think I introduced her to you last year, Tony, uh, uh, Gremlina. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, Sandy, she's a great, she's a pistol. She's only about four foot nothing. Uh, she was in the original uh, Glow series, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. Uh-huh. Funny as hell. And as soon as you start talking to her about anything other than wrestling, uh-huh. she just lights right up. It, and My point exactly. And, and <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was great. I mean, I, I talk to her on Facebook all the time. We actually make plans to... Like either meet up for breakfast or lunch or drinks or something, either during the convention or just before, just after, right. and it, it's, it definitely makes the, the convention worth going to. Right to have that connection. Right now, you re- and you really strike gold when you are there to see somebody who you really want to see, but they don't have much of a following. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Like for example, uh, a few Rock and Shocks ago, one of my favorite horror movies of all time is Suspiria, and there was. Um, a cast member from Suspiria, and at the same time, the line for a few celebrities was out the door. You know, she was chit-chatting with a couple of diehard fans, and that was it. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, that's striking gold. Oh, yeah. In other words, <laughs> they want somebody to talk to, and you're more than happy to meet this person. So, oh, yeah. And awesome. then, you, then you see the people that don't want to be there, and they're walking around looking like a reptilian Bill Clinton. <laughs> see how I brought that full circle? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, Tony, um, speak, who would you say in all the conventions you've gone to, who did who do you think was obvious that they most did not want to be there? You know, I've seen some professional wrestlers at, at various conventions, and I don't, I don't think it's necessarily the fact that they don't want to be there. It's that these guys are in so much pain from wrestling that sitting on that steel chair all day right. makes them want to hit somebody just with it. Just is, <laughs> is probably physical agony for them. You know, good point. I've well, seen guys that can barely walk that are, that are making it to their booth trying to, trying to make it through the day. Right. And, and my, I, I agree with Tony with that. Usually the professional wrestlers, 
Uh, I ran across two of them. One of them I'm not going to name, but he is uh, one of the uh, Samoans. Uh-huh. I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> and uh, he was miserable SOB. As soon as I saw, you know, I just walked up to him before the con even started. I got my vendor ID on. And I just said, hey, how you doing? He wouldn't even talk to me. He made his handler talk to me. <laughs> That was number one. Number two, I am going to call out by name because I don't care. Uh, Virgil, remember uh-huh. the Million Dollar Man and Virgil? <laughs> yes, the biggest non-entity ever to grace right. WWE Did, Didn't circles. he tell you guys to do less charity work? Yeah, he, he's I think actually, that's what, yeah, he told Chuckles the clown, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, actually, it was, oh, was, that it was that directed at me. Me and Chuckles were standing side by side. Okay. And, and he said, well, what's your show about? And I explained uh, the Chuckles and Laughs show, the TV show. And as we're talking, I, I mentioned that it is a nonprofit and everything we do is for charity. Right. And he went on a, probably about a 10, 15 minute tirade on how <laughs> you got a bit paid for everything you do and you got to get paid. And he's, he's telling me how much his car costs, how much his house costs, <laughs> how much he gets paid from the University of God Only Knows, <laughs> University of Phoenix Online. <laughs> but he's telling me all this. And the only thing I got in the back of my head is would you just shut the hell up so I can walk away? <laughs> And as he was in the middle of his tirade, I just interrupted and said, oh, yeah, that's great. I turned around and walked away. <laughs> and he literally was 10 feet away from our table was his right. for that whole – well, he was only there for the one day. Uh-huh. It was a two-day uh, convention. Uh-huh. At the end, I just – 10 feet away. I wouldn't even look at him. He wouldn't look at us <laughs> because he knew Damn. exactly what we thought of him. Right. And the next day, he wasn't even there. You think it's the – you think it's the uh, so-called celebrities with the least accomplishments that have the biggest problem? You're only I've seen the that reason quite that a bit, they're yeah. only there is because they needed to fill a table and, right. and, and you, you know were it. free that weekend. And you know it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get back to the music now. We have some events coming up. We'll talk about that. And the two things, I can't forget this, the two things that, well, they made me feel young again. But uh, up next, we're going to hear from 30 Silver. They're going to be at Firehouse 13 on August 14th, which is a Sunday. However, now that I'm living the self-employed dream, actually Sunday shows uh, work out for me. I love going out Sunday nights and you just have your run of the place because, well, you're the only loser that can go out on <laughs> Sundays. So we're going to hear from 30 Silver up next. Dark and Sinister Man, have it thee. You heard it right here on the Tony Jones Show. <laughs>
Wild and Fuzzy, the name of that one. It's the Ghastly Ones right here on the Tony Jones Show. Before that, 30 Silver. They'll be at Firehouse 13 on Sunday, August 14th. Dark and Sinister Man Have at Thee, the name of that one. Tony Jones here. You are tuned into the Tony Jones Show. TonyJones.org, Facebook.com slash Tony Jones Show. On the almighty Twitter, at Tony Jones NRI. George Garner is here. DJ Psycho Eddie is here. i got to let you all know that the Tony Jones Show is now available on Google Play. So if you're a Google Play user or if you're listening via podcast in a different format, you're more comfortable with Google Play. Google Play is the place for you along with iTunes, Spreaker, Podcast DE. Pretty much if there's a place for you to access streaming content, we're there. So uh, check us out. But, of course, we appreciate those of you who check us out live each and every week. George, Eddie, two events happened this week in quote-unquote pop culture, if you will, that made me feel young again. And they were? The first one being Discord Records releasing all of their content onto Bandcamp. Now, we've talked about it before. Lifelong music collector. I have CDs stacked up all over the place, seven inches, stuff that I've decided to hold on to because it's rare. Right. Actually, some of the stuff in the Discord catalog, which is now available it's not so rare anymore. I can bring it down to Salvation Army because it's now available streaming online. Yeah, free up some room. And it, you know, it's surprising that this is actually the the first time that that this has happened, where you know, a more obscure label has decided we'll take the whole catalog, we'll make it available online. Well, probably because they decided they're not so obscure anymore. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing the amount of stuff that I thought w- was yeah. a rarity. And then you just look at the Internet Universe and you find out that, nah, there's plenty of it out there. And it's someone else out there thinks it sucks, and they've decided to put their copy up on eBay. Right. So now this thing that I've wanted so bad, it's available in, uh, it's going to be on my doorstep in two days. Right. And this is everything. This is music. This is books. This is cars. This, this probably spaceships. Submarines. Submarines. Submarines have been listed on eBay. Well, as well they should be. I mean, we have such an oversupply here in the, <laughs> in the United <laughs> States. <laughs> now, the other thing that happened this week that I'm very excited about because, well, we've talked about the maturity level around here, is that MTV will have a retro channel. What used to be uh, VH1 Classics is now going to be MTV Retro. You'll have your Beavis and Buttheads. You'll have your Jackasses. You'll have your Darias all just Ren and Stimpy. All the stuff from the 90s that I just love that... Uh, All right, let me stop you right there, though. Now, how does that make you feel young? In other words, whenever I hear a song that's now classic rock when it <laughs> used to be regular rock, I mean, that doesn't... You know, that shouldn't make you feel young. That should be, oh, my God. Because I pretend that I'm just still in my heyday. You are. <laughs> I'm we still are. in that heyday. Well, well, now, we're much more excited to the fact that it's available, but however, right. I think it's when I, especially Beavis and Butthead, first oh. of all, I wasn't allowed to watch Beavis and Butthead after they burnt something down or blew it up. So Beavis and Butthead holds a very special place in my heart. Okay, so that's actually probably, I think you've hit on something there. That's probably how we can afford to feel younger watching these retro shows because we've just created new heydays. See, most people just have one. Back in That's my true. back in my heyday, you know, no, we that was only an early heyday. <laughs> we have new ones, so yeah, we can kinda look like, without. Yeah, kind of like when they put out different software and it's two point oh and two point one and three point oh, ten and Vista. Right. Like, this is heyday. I don't know. I'm. I mean, I'm up there. This is like heyday hey, ten point five. <laughs> this is yeah. This is like heyday a hundred for me at this point. I would actually like to see. And, and, you know, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but if MTV would actually get back to some music. Well, they had MTV2, which was supposed to be that, and not the fact. And then they clogged that with all <laughs> now regular they have, TV. Now they have MTVU, which is supposed to be a college channel. Right. Uh, and and that's mostly that TV. With, uh, how I was a teenage mom and crap like that. But think about Beavis and Butthead, the fact that they actually had full music videos on the program. I'm sure if you search the Internet, you can find all those Beavis and Buttheads, uh, I, you know, I, trust me, for a person who searches the internet as much as I do for non porn <laughs> yeah. related. We but, saw what happened earlier today when you typed in you into your search bar, and I'll just leave it there. <laughs> I did not say I was a, a 
a saint by any stretch of the imagination. You mean yes. spelling it E W E, of course, right? <laughs> no, no. I, I typed in Y O U and U <laughs> porn instead of YouTube comes up See, as the first go selection. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I am not a saint by any stretch of the imagination. However, don't get your fingerprints on that computer. <laughs> That's why it's a touch screen with, <laughs> with saran wrap over it. But no, the, the MTV started off as music videos, music television. It's in the name. Every incarnation, MTV2, MTVU, M, M, can they just put some damn music back on the air? All right, let me. Ex- I think I might have the answer to why they can't because the music video's time has come and gone. Yeah. Talk about a heyday. I mean, music video has had its heyday. Music video has actually been replaced by reality television. But I'm saying it, almost every band out there is still making music videos for yeah, but, their music. Yeah, but who the hell wants to watch them? <laughs> I mean, even no, seriously, I mean, really, even my favorite bands, like oh. if they come up with a, first of all, the universe of music videos is limited creatively, okay? Really. I mean, except... Yeah, every now and then you get something like your Michael Jackson's Thriller. That's an exception. Yeah, I mean, 99% of all music videos are limited creatively. Um, the other thing is, even my, if my favorite band comes up with a video, I'm more likely not to take the time to sit there and watch it. I'm more likely to, surprise, surprise, just listen to it. <laughs> True. Yeah. And, and I will give you that. However... The way I'm looking at it, with the attention span that most people in society right. have right now, two to three minute songs is only all the attention span that most of these people have. Mm-hmm. Wow. So if you've got a 30 minute program and you have a two to three minute attention span, first commercial, they're changing the channel anyways. Right. So either turn all your reality shows into two to three minute segments and break it up, or... Just do the music videos. Okay, speaking of that, now, how long is a typical music video? Now, when we talk well, about... How long like, is a typical song? Well, that's what I'm, my question is these days. In other words, I never haven't really thought about it in a I'm, long time. I'm, I'm going to say like about four to five minutes is what I usually run all right, for too, us. All right, then maybe that's another answer. Too long for a music video. Too long to sit there and watch a music video. I, all right, I, I, I will give you that. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to start a movement. Shorten your songs, make more videos, and get a music video channel. Right. Get a music video channel. Because short, I, right, shorten your songs to about, you know, two, two and a half minutes. minutes, two to three minutes. That works. Um, and the other thing is you need an infusion of creativity. Well, creativity coming and from by musicians, which I, by hopefully which, there is <laughs> already in place a little creativity. Yeah, but not when it comes. I'll tell you. Not the ones getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there's a little bit of a gap there between video and uh, what we say video and audio talent. In oh. other words, like a lot of great bands made really crappy videos. Yeah, they did. Well, I'll give you that. I <laughs> mean, they they couldn't get out of standing up there on a stage with a camera running. Well, if <laughs> seriously, they bought very expensive cameras and very expensive stage clothes, but mm. it was still them just. Yeah. Standing there. I mean, even if you look at and if you have uh, high def TV or uh-huh. you pay the extra money to get the high def channels on cable, they have this channel called Palladia. Right. And all they do is broadcast concerts. Yeah. And I, I can tell you personally, I've watched more concerts that I wish I could have gone to in person. Uh-huh. And, and I've seen them on Palladia and awesome coverage because of course it's in high def full right. screen i got the 42 inch 52 inch whatever the hell it is in my my uh my living room you almost feel like you're there you turn on the surround sound it's almost better in fact it is better than going to the concert because i can pause it go get a beer come back and keep watching right. now if we go to our own mardi gras up the street here in the rock room they actually play live concerts in right. between bands at the live concert venue. Right, to try to get you to stay there and listen to the live bands <laughs> right? half the time. Well, if you're not spoon... We've talked about this a hundred times on the air. If you're not spoon-feeding people more entertainment, keep them occupied, they are going to leave. Right. 
So that's Mardi Gras just takes people by the hand. Right. Okay, live music isn't on right now, so let's give you a, so a pseudo live version of whatever song you actually want to hear. Right. No, the concert. No, that concert channel. That's a great product. That's a great idea. Oh, I love it. On the other hand, it's going to be too niche. Niche, niche, however you pronounce that. Sounds good to me. Yeah, for MTV. Like I say, I think, I think you hit it when you said two-minute videos. Yeah. That, that would work. Two-minute videos, commercials, two-minute videos, commercials. Yeah. And, keep, and keep it going. And keep, keep it, it going. moving. Right. right. I mean, even in the, the modern dance music, when they have like the five-minute, six-minute introduction to that song, people rambling and just talking. Shut up. Get to the music. Well, there's certain uh, substances that are in play in that situation that makes that I, I appealing. I'm not referring strictly to Snoop Dogg. Actually, <laughs> he's one of the better ones at that. But, I mean, you, you get people where it's just like five minutes of talking before the song even yeah. starts. No, right? nobody, has co- nobody has, in the history of music, even yeah. people that like you too, has come to a concert and say, man, I, I hope, especially a local band, I hope those guys talk all night. That's going to be awesome. Like, no, shut up. Right. <laughs> I'll tell you, the best attention getter that I've ever come across is, uh, at least for live shows, is... Uh, Human Sacrifice? Uh, no, that not quite. No. Um, I played with the head cutters up on Coney Island at this club called Cha-Cha's. And what they did is, between bands, they had a stripper get up. Yes. And I don't know, Tony, if you were there for this or you were... Right, I told. I think I told you about this. Well, I've seen burlesque in between at shows, which is just an awesome attention getter. Right, except that this girl... If let's say that there were five bands, between every band she would get up and do a little more, <laughs> so that you wanted to be there at the end of that fifth band to see they, what they were beating you along. Yeah, I mean the clothes were all off by the fourth band. What was she going to do? Kind of like play at strip poker, <laughs> right? So yeah, no, that's I'll tell you. You know, some ideas I wish I had thought of myself. I mean, if I could think of ideas like that consistently, I would be in show business. Let's get back to the music now. We're going to hear a double shot from Worm, who I'm trying to get into this very studio. Yes, we are in negotiations. Yes, alternative media negotiations. Uh, pretty much which week can you come down and which six-pack should we have in the fridge? <laughs> We're going to hear two from Worm, starting with Girls in the Mosh Pit right here on the Tony Jones Show.
Scarecrow, the name of that one, some Michael Graves right here on the Tony Jones Show off of Night of Sam Hain. Before that, we heard two from Worm who were trying to get in this very studio. When we chatted, I brought you into Girls in the Mosh Pit. Then after that, Our Roots, you were tuned in to the Tony Jones Show. And unfortunately, we are just about out of time, if you can believe that. We do have two big events coming up, one of them being the Rhode Island Free Radio Anniversary Party. That's going to be happening the Sunday of Labor Day. So stay tuned for all the information on that. And our own George Garner, yes, George Garner's last gasp, not taking a traditional approach to the cliche stupid bachelor party. You're all invited to George Garner's birthday party, uh, bachelor, bachelor party. party. There will be no nudity. Well, I might get naked, but that's, a, that's not confirmed yet. But uh, it's going to be a good old-fashioned heavy metal show. Nice. <laughs> Lots of noise. So you're all, everybody in our listening audience and across the globe, you're all invited to send George Garner off. The world's oldest living teenager will be tying the knot. You're invited to celebrate. Okay, yeah, what's the date of that? I don't know. I'm still working on that because okay. being the... Being, I just wanted to make sure you didn't forget so I show up. Being the um, mm, thrifty person that I am, I'm, I'm trying to get us a place where we don't have to pay any money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm cheap, folks. Painfully yeah, cheap. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I chose you as best man for a reason, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be, there's going to be a cost savings on a bachelor party. <laughs> All right. We're going to get out of here, guys. Thank you. Facebook.com slash Tony Jones. On the almighty Twitter at Tony Jones in RI, go to TonyJones.org and RIFreeRadio.org. Yes, a perfect, perfect song to leave any program with. We're going to hear from Morris and the East Coast. Will you love me when I lose my mind? Bye, everybody. Bye.
when I'm bound to die And it's a short while now It's crucial you fly And dawn isn't breaking Cause I fixed it in the night We love me when I lose my mind Goes on and on from dusk until dawn. The summer of fall, and frozen a thought. But does it die with mine? Does it die? DJ Seiko Eddie Air. That was the new beat fund. Name of the song was Sunday Fun Day. Speaking of which, it is Sunday. I've already cracked into the uh, six pack and I'm working on uh, Narragansett 
Summertime Citra Ale. Highly recommended if you I haven't can get tried your hands that one on. yet. You haven't tried it? No. Definitely. I think there's a couple more in the fridge. Uh, you might as well grab one before I do because uh, they're going down way too smooth. Uh, if you want to be part of the show, uh, I'm going to get this right out in front. My Night Out Radio at Verizon.net. Hit me up if you want to advertise, if you want to get your events out there, if you want to send me some music. And now I have to do a shout out because, you know, places, Rhode Island, obviously, you, we know you're going to be listening. Rhode Island, Mass, Connecticut, people that normally hear us. But I've been in contact with Sweden. That's right. Uh, Anders. Anders Bozell from Sala, Sweden. If you want to find it on a map, it's 1.5 hours, hour and a half northeast of Stockholm. Uh, he, he got in touch with me. He's been sending me some really good music, uh, mostly acoustic um, or instrumental, I should say. Not a lot of words to it, but excellent music. Look him up on YouTube. Uh, once again, Anders, A-N-D-E-R-S. Uh, second name is Bosell, B-O-S-E-L-L. Uh, look him up on YouTube. We'll give him a listen. Tell me what you think. My Night Out Radio at Verizon.net. Also, if you have uh, needs to, uh, to to look at upcoming events, MyNightOutRI.com. Facebook forward slash MyNightOut. Twitter and Instagram, DJ Psycho Eddie or MyNightOutRI. Wow. Almost one breath. I got it all out. <laughs> you know, bringing it back to folks listening in from Sweden, when I first started out on radio on 91.5 WCVY Coventry, you could barely get the signal in the parking lot <laughs> of the school <laughs> where the station was and the fact that people listen to us all over the globe. I mean, it's just is fantastic time to be it's doing this stuff. I, lo- I love getting emails. Just tell me where you're from. I, you don't say anything else. Just, hi, where from, wherever you are. In this case, Sala, Sweden. Uh, you know, I, I've gotten emails from England. I've gotten emails from, uh, oh, crap, South America, from uh, Brazil. Brazil was one of my favorites because there were pictures involved. Uh, <laughs> but we got a lot of music tonight because... I really have been rather jammed up. Uh, as you know, I, I did a camp out a, uh, last week, week before, something like that. I don't know, days of blending. <laughs> and and I kind of killed my truck to the point where it wasn't worth fixing it. It, it, it would cost <laughs> me more than it was worth. <laughs> you know, uh, for those of you who don't know the story, I stuffed my truck, four-wheel drive, into a mud hole so deep, I broke a, an axle getting out of the mud hole. <laughs> So if anyone has a truck for sale, <laughs> hit me up, MyNightOutRadio at Verizon.net. I, I, I'm kind of scraping bottom right now. Tomorrow I'm going to be riding my motorcycle in the rain to work. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. So uh, as you can hear in the background, or not in the background, the, the other voice you're hearing, Tony Jones on the soundboard. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start calling you my, my co-host because it's usually the, just the two of us here. It's because I'm just not capable of shutting up. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine because I'm really not capable of thinking thoroughly myself. So we're making a good team here. But with that said, I, I'm, I'm going to go right back to some music because, uh, well, my beer's empty. Uh, it's it's going to get colorful tonight, people. Uh, we're going to leave here with, uh, well, not leave here. We're going to go to a break. Melissa Bellarosa. The name of the song is Moving On. We'll be back in a little while.
DJ Psycho Eddie here. We're having a wonderful conversation about gold bond powder, <laughs> which I just really can't share with I you. I prefer cornstarch. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Talc is now causing, I don't know, cancer and liver failure. And, well, then again, so is the beer I've been drinking. But, hey, I continue to use the beer. Um, this, this week, I, I will admit, I, I'm less than as prepared as I normally am, which is usually shamefully unprepared to begin with. But uh, I, like I said before, I am looking for a truck, and, and I have to get up on my soapbox here because there's just so many crooked, I, I don't know. Testify. There's just so many scumbags in these, these used auto sales. Oh, especially used. Well, sorry, with the, the check that I get here every week from... <laughs> From our iFree Radio, uh, I can't really afford to go new right now. <laughs> the Escalade, now. the uh, 2016 Escalade, isn't going to be pulling in the parking lot it's here anytime. Just, just out of my price range, you know, <laughs> 1980s, 1990s is the, the kind of <laughs> where I'm going right now. <laughs> Chrysler LeBaron convertible. No, I, I have to have something big enough to carry all my gear. So I, I'm thinking like an, an old Delta 88, Delta 98. <laughs> but no, I, actually, I am looking 2000. 
2010, 2012, like excursion, you know, SUV, big SUVs. Because I'm I'm not what you would consider small. <laughs> um, but getting back to my soapbox rant, I, I pull into one dealership, and they have two SUVs that fit perfectly into what I want. I pull in, and they just happen to have just sold those SUVs two months ago. And have yet to take them off their website. I believe that's what's known as a bait and switch, which is illegal. Well, it is. However, because it's on the Internet, it doesn't fall under state guidelines. So I went into two different dealerships where that had happened. They had two SUVs. I mean, they were absolutely beautiful, low mileage, right in my price range. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I literally, I, I walked in with a couple of thousand dollars in my hand saying, take my money, I want that truck. Oh, sorry, we don't have that. (laughs) The other one we heard, the other one that really drove me up a wall was, oh, I'm sorry, that's in our Avon, Mass., or that's in our Auburn, Massachusetts lot. Uh, If you have such a large stock on your lot that you have to put stuff in another state. (laughs) Damn. If you want to talk to the mechanic, I'll get them for you. I I don't even want to talk to the salesman, let alone (laughs) the mechanic. And uh, that 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 went awry, but the one that really chapped my backside, the one that set me on a tear and ruined the whole. De- you know, I I like cars. I like the negotiate. Mm-hmm. I am a bastard when it comes to negotiating. However, this guy is trying to explain. Yeah. You know, last time I went scouting for babes <laughs> w- w- was back in the nineties, late nineties, early you know late late eighties, early nineties. I, I got to be careful because my wife's in the studio listening, so I got to make sure I get the dates correct. <laughs> you better. <laughs> but uh, I don't care what the truck looks like as long as I can fit all my sound gear into it going to a gig, and I don't have to play Tetris every time I pack the thing. So, yeah, he's trying to tell me. And, and the, the part that really ch- chaps my backside of that whole backside chapping is... Uh, <laughs> It's a mile from my house. <laughs> if the guy came down maybe $1,000, I would have a new vehicle in the parking lot right now. Which, to, to uh, add to the story, your previous vehicle has already been sold, right? Yes. The, the, the vehicle that I stuffed into the mud hole, which I, I spoke of at the, the beginning of the show, uh, my landscaper, who does a hell of a job, by the way, uh, I, I just threw out a number which was... Probably what it would cost to fix it, um, you know, low th- you know, thousand, a little bit over a thousand dollars to fix it. The truck's only worth about two, so I, you know, I said, all right, give me X amount of dollars, and I even let him talk me down. You know, he's going to cut my lawn for the rest of the year for free, do the fall cleanup, and X amount of dollars. So he, you know, I gave him a good deal. He's a small businessman, local businessman. I gave him. The best possible deal for the piece of crap that I just sold him. <laughs> which, now, did you at least rinse the mud off before you sold it to him? No. <laughs> the mud actually added to the... In fact, I left the change, that, that coin change holder. Is that when you told him, well, you know, the mud adds an extra $3,000 to the value? Well, I, I actually had to count out the, the $4 and some odd cents in uh, change that were in the coin yeah, that's holder. that's toll money. That went into the, the value of the vehicle. That, that's how low the sales price was. So, yeah, when you're counting out ones when you're buying a vehicle, there, there is an issue with the, the, that vehicle. But he's going to fix it up. He's going to put a snowplow on it, whatever he's going to do. And, and my, my landscaper's name is Carlos. Carlos, <laughs> if you're listening, God bless you for taking that truck. Um, I, and and I, I told him the truth. I told him about the uh, heater core, which hasn't been fixed in four years. The only thing holding that together is thumb gum and some type of stop leak. <laughs> uh, the radio kind of works sometimes if you have a CD in it. That's right. I remember handing you a CD at one point, and you said, uh, my CD player doesn't work. Yeah, the CD player didn't. Well, it does work now. I, I, I kind of punched it enough times <laughs> where that started to work. But long story short, it, it, uh, it, it's a very good work truck. Not really good for showing off and, you know, hey, look at my new vehicle with uh, rust all the way around the <laughs> wheel wells. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get off my soapbox now. my now. question is, did you peel the Tony Jones and the Cretan 3 sticker off 
for your new vehicle. Negative. They, that vehicle, we have a stack right over here. <laughs> when I sold it, has the RI free radio, the My Night Out radio stickers, the Tony Jones and the Cretan 3, and a bunch of other local bands that uh, gave me stickers. They are still on that. Well, truck. you know that adds an extra three hundred, <laughs> that extra, extra three thousand dollars to the the price of the vehicle. Well, understandably so. However, I could not talk a landscaper who <laughs> English is a second language. <laughs> He didn't really care about the bands, and he's probably scraping them off right now with a, a razor blade. Or the the thing is with your situation, your experience with these dealerships. You know, you and I, and most of the people listening to the show, are smart enough to know when they're being had or attempted to be screwed. But just think about all the people that go to these places in good faith and actually get screwed. I mean, it's a large amount of the population. They get into these loans, and it's just it's junk. When you get into a car. And the f- first payment you make on that car, and you're already upside down in the loan, yeah, that's that's horrible. And, and I am, I've actually earned the nickname Harry the Bastard. <laughs> if you remember the young ones from MTV, uh, Harry the Bastard was the uh, landlord. But I am, I am absolutely atrocious when it comes to negotiating with these car dealers, because I know just how much they're screwing the general <laughs> public, and. I I thought the better of it. I was going to call out the dealership by name. And if you send me an email, I probably will tell you in an email. But the most unscrupulous, they wouldn't even negotiate with me. Nope, that's the price. And they're trying to tell me how the owner. That's messed up. Yeah, the owner of the business who was probably the guy sitting in the next desk over because he wouldn't raise his head as (laughs) I'm explaining to him how wrong he is. But that he's he's nineteen thousand into this vehicle, and he's giving you a deal by selling at the price that he's selling it. Well, number one, if you're losing money on a sale, you're stupid. You're not going to be in business much longer. Exactly. I, I think we determined that if you put fifteen dollars a product <laughs> and sell it for nine, it's not really going to be advantageous for your bottom line. So, having gone through all this, and that was just in the course of eight hours yesterday. I hit a bunch of dealerships, and and trust me, as the weeks go on, you will hear more about new vehicle shopping. Now, I I think I know what the solution is here. The fabled Chevrolet El Camino. (laughs) The mullet of automobiles. (laughs) If you could find an El Camino with, even rarer, the cap (laughs) to make it look like uh, a station wagon. That would be the ultimate vehicle for what I need. Business in the front, party in the back. That's right. But uh, unless I can get an El Camino or the even lesser known Ford Ranchero, (laughs) uh, I'm going to be sticking with a a large SUV. So that's enough of the soapbox rip. Let's get back to the music. A couple of guys we had in studio a couple months ago, Blindside Thunder. Name of the song is Dream Girl. We'll be back in a little bit.
That was Pistol Shot Gypsy. Name of the song was Just My Luck. Before that, we heard Prospect Hill Roller Coaster. And of course, starting off that three play was Blindside Thunder Dream Girl. Now, I know most of you are already wondering I'm not talking about food. Well, I'm going to solve that right now. Uh, because of all the crap that's going on and my lack of being able to get around all that much, we have not been able to go out that much. However, the missus and I did get out at least twice this week, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. First place, East Providence Pawtucket Line, Hibachi Grill Supreme Buffet. Hmm. Now, if, Was if, Maniac Mike there? <laughs> fortunately, I think that was a little bit outside of his, uh, he's, his uh, travel he's zone. He's an East Providence resident. He is an East yeah. Providence resident. Oh, holy crap. I'm surprised I didn't run into him then. <laughs> but if you remember the old-style Chinese restaurants where everything was either dark red and you had all, like, the dark wood accents, that's what this place reminded me of. Oh, but it was done, and I dare to use the word, tastefully. Uh, they had a huge bar, which I did not partake in. And uh, i got to say, the, the food that they put out, the steam tables actually had steam coming out of them. They weren't just lukewarm. They were actually hot tables. Uh, the sushi was cold. The food that was, well, it's supposed to be cold. Don't make that face. I know you're not a big fan of sushi, but if you do like sushi, it wasn't that bad. You know, for, for a buffet sushi, it wasn't bad at all. Uh, the um, Buffet sushi. <laughs> well, no, no, you do have to clarify because you have places like Osushi, uh, Seven Moons, where they make the sushi to order just for you, which definitely blows the buffet sushi out of the water because for the buffet sushi, they have to keep the rice a little wetter yeah. and, and it's not filled the same. For the, for, you know, I, I don't know exactly how to describe it to you, but it's not the same. But it was good for what it was. You know, utilitarian buffet sushi. Uh, all the different stuff that was out there. The, you know, the typical crab rangoons. Uh, you had all, all the you know, chicken wings, the, the, the boneless spare ribs. All, all the, the typical stuff that was out there. But then they had one which was all quote-unquote American food. They had ribs, mashed potatoes, onion rings. All, all the stuff that if you don't like Chinese food and we're still hungry... You could have it there. And it was all actually really good. I was surprised. Um, price was you know on par for most of the other buffets, $10, $12 a person, $14 a person. I don't really remember which because uh, I did drink afterwards. Yeah. Uh, we had there. And, of course, you know the typical breakfast stop, we had to go to uh, Old Theater Diner, which is, for I believe, under new management hmm. because the food has taken a complete 180 and has improved considerably over what was already good food. You know, they, they actually take the time to put that little bit of char or a little bit of color on the meats before they put them into a, an omelet. You know, they're not afraid to actually put butter on the toast. <laughs> uh, of course, 
And, and I'll say this a million times be, between now and by, by the time this show ends or by the time I die, the coffee was on par with what you would expect with a good breakfast. M- wasn't that great. So I, I, I opt for the soda now. It's you know not really breakfast beverage, but it's better than a bad cup of coffee. <laughs> I, I got to say it. So th- those are my two places. It's better on your digestive system, to put it nicely, than a bad cup of coffee. <laughs> well, sometimes you do need that bad cup of coffee to get things kicking. I believe they call that again. spring cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, I-, I do try to avoid the roto-rooter of beverages. <laughs> now, I actually had breakfast today. For some godforsaken reason, I was up early. You got up before the crack of noon? <laughs> I decided to go to a place in walking distance, and they uh, were an exception to the rule. I had a great cup of iced coffee and a great breakfast. I had the vegetable omelet, chuck full of vegetables, side of home fries, rye toast, huge coffee. Uh, and I think for, for me and Christina, it maybe came to $25, $30 with tip, and that was the Beach Rose Cafe. And we got there before it got busy. Beach Rose Cafe, great destination in Wickford. Sometimes they have a line out the door, a line around the building. You have to wait for a table. Um, but it was there wasn't much going on. The village was just getting going at that time. So I was able to get in, get my food, get a great spot. Well, sometimes you have to read those lines. You know, when you see a line of people out in front of a, a business or, or especially a restaurant, take a good look at the line. Do they look like locals? Yeah. Because, I mean, if you have a bunch of tourists lined up in front of some place, it's just because it's the only place that's open <laughs> or, or you're, you're in the middle of a tourist area. But if you're looking at that line and you see so, a lot of crusty old dudes by themselves or hanging out with other crusty old dudes right. or people that you see walking around town all the time, that, that's, that's how you know it's going to be good and cheap because the locals will, will flock to a good, cheap meal. And that was the best part about when the Wickford Diner – was in business in Wickford because you knew that it was a great filling, sustaining breakfast because all the call huggers ate there. Now, these guys are going to be out on the – this is their meal, and they're going to be out on the boat for the next 10, 12, maybe 15 hours. I mean, you know they're going to scarf down a huge breakfast. Well, with, with, with call hoggers and fishermen in general, usually they have a, 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 a substantial breakfast – and the rest of their meals for the day are, are liquid. Core hogs. <laughs> liquid, uh, liquid lunch, liquid dinner, <laughs> and maybe a few core hogs if they really get hungry. And, and you can always tell the ones that do that quite a bit uh, when they have the hot sauce in a, in a yeah. fishing rod holder on, on, in one of the gunnels on the boat. I, 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 did do, uh, I did a little bit of fishing, not, not commercially, but with someone who was commercial. I gave him a hand one or two days, and when I took the bottle of hot sauce and he looked at me like I had four heads. Yeah, that, that wasn't pleasant. Plus I, I you know, he actually tried to make me pay for the like six or eight call, you know, clams that I ate Damn. off the Yeah. I and mean, I know it's a small profit margin, but geez. <laughs> well, I, I'm not even that cheap. <laughs> when I when I say four to six, I'm going upwards of a dozen. Oh, dozen four to six half. dozen. All right. That makes a little <laughs> bit more sense. No, I Hey, I'm a big guy. I need a good lunch. Uh, I wasn't going to dip into the, his 12-pack uh, of uh, generic white label black lettered beer. Beer, beer. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I opted for the seafood lunch, and uh, he tried to charge me for it. So Now, the other thing that I notice, I just notice it right now, that two of the best meals I've had in the past two weeks have been off of the back or the side of trucks. And that was Rocket Fine Foods, which we had up at Paracon. Yep. And for the past two weeks, the Haven Brothers mobile food truck has been down in Wickford for the Tuesday night concert. So I've been eating there on Tuesdays. And uh, again, just a, a food you wouldn't expect to come off a food truck. Just huge portions, awesome food, and, uh, and not too bad on the wallet. Well, I got to say, I've been going to Haven Brothers proper, the one that's right next to the Providence City Hall since the Terminator was in the, the movie theaters. <laughs> so that, that's to give you a little indication of how old I am. And when you have the bum with his pants off imitating the bum from Terminator, because that's why I remember how long ago it was. Um, no, I, I, I've been a, a, a steady customer, we'll call it, uh, almost a cornerstone at uh, Haven Brothers at, at some points. 
Uh, they have a burger called the Triple Murder Burger, yeah. which is three patties with cheese, fried eggs, and, and a whole bunch of other stuff on there. And it's a really good burger. Uh, granted, usually when I go there, I am less than savory. <laughs> less than ready to drive, which means you need to have a meal. Y- you do. You, you have to get something to snap you out of the stupor you're in. And, and lots of protein and grease will usually do that. One of my old stomping grounds back in the day, a bar that I went to to the point where I could probably take my mail there was Safari Lounge. Uh, and that was right around the corner from, from Haven Brothers. And yeah, I it was uh, spent literally some great nights right there. up that road. Actually, uh, if you're having a meal and you're listening to this or you're about to have a meal, it might be time to turn away. The Haven Brothers had, you know, you could order from the window. You could go into this little room, you know, maybe a five-by-five room and order at the counter. And I actually barfed in that little room as all these people <laughs> were were in line to get their food. And uh, it was, But it was real liquidy, and I just, I, I mean, I probably covered that whole Five by five space in in foamy vomit. Oh no! I, I never went inside just for fear of something just like that. Now they had they did uh, a few years back. Now they did a, a documentary about the Haven Brothers food truck, which was aired on PBS, and I think you can get the DVD online. Uh, and it's a, to think of a, the fact that that food truck originally, now originally, originally was brought there by horse and buggy through the streets of Providence. It, unbelievable. Haven Brothers, when it started over a hundred years ago, and it has been documented by the the U.S. Right. whatever, uh, they are one of, if not the oldest lunch cart in the country. And of course, they have the you know, the, the ubiquitous dirty water hot dogs, <laughs> you know, suspect meat in tube form, however you want to put it, meat in uh, meat of ill providence. We'll call it that. <laughs> Um, but they have been around in, in existence for well over a hundred years, and they have a following equal to, if not more ferocious than the Oneyville, New York yeah. system, which uh, I, I also love. So, if you ever get a chance, if you're ever in Providence, literally on the doorstep of the Providence City Hall after, and I think it's nine or ten o'clock at night. You can go to Haven Brothers. Also, they are they do have a a secondary outpost, which is a new addition for them. Uh, and they also, with the mobile food truck, they do catering now. Which is uh, on my show, we were talking about George Garner's non traditional bachelor party. Looking into food trucks, I mean, there's nothing better than a, for a guy who's grown up his whole life in Rhode Island to try to get Haven Brothers down there. Well, that that's leads me directly into what my next stop was where we got some parties coming up. But we'll talk about that in just a few minutes uh, because, sadly, we have another band going by the wayside. That's right, Most Dangerous Men Alive. They've been in this very studio. They've been in this studio. They, they put on a hell of a show. They drank copious amounts of uh, Narragansett. And they brought food. They did. They brought some kick, killer chili. I, I, don't even want to see, I don't even want to curse tonight. They brought some killer chili in here. Ben, Eric, the rest of the guys, they, they, they put on a hell of a performance in studio acoustically. And their last show is going to be this Friday. Um, I don't have it up in front of me, but look it up. Uh, I'll be posting it later on this week on Facebook. I will be there. Uh, they'll, they'll have a few other people, uh, a few other, I believe the Quins are performing with them. Uh, and so, I hear rumors of some barbecue going on, speaking of food. There is going to be. This, this is all put on by um, Midday Records and Midday, the Midday Barbecue Shows, or, or whatever you want to call them. It's over at dusk. It just sprung to my mind. <laughs> tweet, 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 tweet. <laughs> <laughs> that tells you how focused I am today, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. But, yeah, if you go to dusk this Friday night, uh, they are, they're, they're doing the Midday Barbecue Social Show with... Most Dangerous Men Alive, The Quins, and a couple other really great bands. Uh, so you definitely want to check them out. But we're going to leave here. We're going to take a break. We're going to listen to Most Dangerous Men Alive. The name of the song is Women in Whiskey. We'll be back in a little bit.
Only thing I got to look forward to Been in for far too long Oh, something's gotta go wrong Oh, I can feel it in my skin like All the nights in Yes, I had it coming on That Should was, we have a moment of silence? Rest in peace. Yeah, that that was most dangerous men alive. Sorry to see you guys breaking up. Uh, we were supposed to do Jet Black Sunrise. Unfortunately, it did not play. So, uh, sorry guys. We're, we're, we'll try to get you on for next week. But that frees up just about a minute and a half, two minutes, where I can talk about September fourth, the RI Free Radio Anniversary Party that's coming up. Um, in true fat guy fa- fashion, we're going to be doing at the Rocky Point Chowder House. Oh, yeah. That's right. Food and music. How can you go wrong? You definitely want to check it out. I can't even tell you all the details because we have to keep it hush-hush for just a little while. And we'll be offering uh, a deep discount to anybody that shows up. So don't think that you know, you're going to come out and pay full price. We're going to have... Uh a deep discount on a bunch of the menu, almost all the menu items except for lobster, and only because we can't price lobster because they do buy it fresh off the boat uh, every morning. So 
keep uh, keep uh, tuned for that. Uh, I will be posting stuff up. I'm sure Tony will be definitely doing the uh, the social media aspect. Of I was thinking about up. having some kind of an eating contest involved with this uh, this shindig too. Not maybe not like anything that's going to give us all the gout, but uh, uh, I don't know, maybe do, uh, doughboys or uh, I'm thinking mini clam doughboys, cakes. donuts, mini donuts, mini donuts. Uh, there is that possibility. I was also thinking about a Dell's lemonade chugging contest, but uh, <laughs> that'll just put you in the hospital. <laughs> Yes, died of terminal brain freeze. <laughs> but again, that's September 4th coming up a uh, little bit more than a month away, so definitely want to keep tuned for that. Uh, next week, there will not be a live show, but as usual, seven nights a week, 8.30 to 9.30, you can catch me on RI Free Radio. Please listen in. Uh, also, what else do we have? We have the George Garner Bachelor Party. Uh, that's going to be coming up. We do not have a definite date other than before the end of October. Hopefully before his wedding. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, uh, we are keeping it uh, borderline PG-13. Yeah, it'll be a little heavier. You know, I know a lot of heavy metal fans listen to this show, so I think it's going to appeal to them. And, and this is your, your public invite. Uh, once we stop posting when and where it is going to be, which I believe... Uh, Mr. Jones is working on as we speak. Uh, the George Garner Bachelor Party is a public event. We want as many of you to come down and wish him well for the uh, world's oldest living teenager. Or try to talk him out of it. <laughs> but, you know, give give them uh, give everyone a, a little time for rebuttal. But uh, either way, uh, definitely come down. We will be talking about that. That's the George Garner Bachelor Party. Two awesome events that you definitely want to check out. Um, I think that's going to pretty much wrap it up for tonight. Uh, it, once again, if you want to get in touch with us, if you want to get music on like some of the bands you've heard tonight, you want to send it to me at mynightoutradio at verizon.net. Uh, if you need to find out about upcoming events, mynightoutri.com, Facebook, forward slash mynightout, Twitter and Instagram, DJ Psycho Eddie or mynightoutri. You definitely want to hit us up. You definitely want to check us out because we have so much great stuff coming up. Now, speaking you of following you on social media, did I spot you wearing a tie-dye shirt? Yes, <laughs> uh, I do own. Actually, I have a friend that makes tie-dye shirts. That was a custom for me tie-dye tank top. Uh, my friend Dan, Dan um, McGuire, Dan McGuire, if you go on my Facebook friends list, or I'll, I'll actually post it up, tie-dye by Dan. Uh, you want to check him out. He does custom shirts, whatever size. <laughs> Obviously, if he could fit me, he could probably fit a Buick. But uh, <laughs> he'll tie-dye T-shirts, sweatshirts, pants, anything. So uh, I'll post up his information. Um, that's going to wrap it up for us. Now, being a child where I most of my formative years have been in the 80s, my taste of music from the 80s, it really made me very happy to hear that Down City Omri, a band that we uh, we haven't had on except to play their music, they did a cover uh, uh, of a song. You'll figure it out. The name of the song is Chow Fi, Down City Omri. Thank you for listening, everybody. We'll catch you soon. Hey!